r slash ask women. Suspended underscore accountant says. Ladies who deal with migraines regularly, what do you do to handle them? Davy Fail says. I have them often enough that I visited with my doctor and got prescribed zomagnasal spray, zalmatriptan, in addition to ibuprofen. I take ibuprofen directly when I start feeling that pressure and light sensitivity. If I don't get an effect within 1 to 1 hour I usually have to take Zomig. I can expect an effect from Zomig within 5 to 10 minutes, and after 30 minutes the pain is usually completely gone. Sometimes I have to take a second dose of Zomig, but it's very rare. Faggy1410 says. Coffee plus P-A-R-E-C-E-T-A-M-O-L. Valida390 says. I limit my screen time and exposure to fluorescent lights and bright sunlight. Ask your work for filters, if you are forced to sit under fluorescence. Dim your screens. As soon as one starts coming on, drink caffeine and get in a darkened room. Really nothing else to do. I took statins for a bit, but they made me sicker than the migraine. I was also helped by magnesium glycinate supplements. Minimum underscore muse says. Triptans. Somerset76 says. I used to do dark room with hot and cold alternating. I also use a migraine stick, coils that roll on. I got my dates pierced a few years ago, and have had fewer migraines since. CaddyMary94 says. Migraine ice cap, giving myself grace, when I can't think straight. Night Pooh says. I get migraines often, usually from forgetting to eat, or too much screen time, but the sun and loud noises can cause it, so can congestion and intense crying sessions. I take extra strength exodrin and some form of caffeine, and then try to be in darkness or low light and silence. I'm pregnant now, so I can only take Tylenol, it, frick, ein sucks, but definitely more water, and eating more often in addition to the low light helps, a nap is super relaxing, but doesn't usually take away any pain. Fartin around says. Got a prescription risotriptan that works for the most part. I was getting them every day, and it was affecting my vision, ability to drive, ability to work etc. I still have to stay away from triggers like alcohol and excess sugar. I also use BC to regulate my hormones as that is a huge trigger for me. The BC makes them less severe. Salt and magnesium helps with severity, before they happen too. Not sure why. Alternative Strain 410 says. A ridiculous amount of weed and an avil. DR underscore girlfriend underscore 81 says. High CBD weed, caffeine, and naps. Cool room with warm blankets. No light, sounds, or smells. Heat pad on my head. Classy says. I used to get them all the time in undergrad, and in my old apt. Getting out of central TX and old buildings helped immensely. I recently got a date piercing and it actually has helped with even run of the mill headaches. Planning to get the other side done in a few months. But, I manage them with the standard cold, dark, quiet. This is before the good meds were available. Cold air on face and neck, air conditioning if you can, rather than a fan blowing. A dark room, preferably without windows, or blackout curtains over windows, rather than an eye mask. Quiet. White noise sometimes helps, especially in a dorm or apartment, or the good earplugs sold for hunting practice. Ask your doctor for Phenergan, rather than Zofran for nausea. Or get both, and take the Phen first and the Zofran 30 minutes later. Especially if seeing a specialist, or getting the fancy new meds is taking too long, is $2 sign dollar sign dollar sign, or denied by insurance. Finergan definitely comes as suppositories, if the migraine and nausea is super severe. If you notice they are spring and pollen induced, ask about allergy testing, or rotate through the OTC allergy meds. R slash ask women. Adhesiveness even 7287 says. What are your thoughts on Barbie? Saland says. It's a doll. 
Midnight Fire Huntress says. Fun toy and looks like a fun movie. D. Katrina Shadow Lee says. She has grown far beyond where she started. Kiorin says. Generally I think everybody makes a bigger deal out of the toys than anyone should, in both directions. I was a fat little girl who played with the skinny Barbies in the 80s and 90s, and I never once felt deprived, because my Barbies weren't fat like me. With that said, however, I know I'm not the only person in the world and that having such a wide variety of Barbies available to children now does make a lot of them feel represented and seen. I definitely don't begrudge kids the dolls they like. I just also don't think that the diversity is metal doing anything but trying to get as much money out of consumers as it can. With that said, I'm, frick, I'm psyched for the movie. I have faith that Margaret Robbie and Greta Gerwig are making good shit. Bellin Binary says. I love Barbie. Time Boss 3867 says. My favorite toy as a child. Louv Barbie. Buxo says. I Jeff. K40B14CK says. Setting and realistic body standards for young girls since 1959. I preferred my action man. At least he had a parachute. Best Scallion 2730 says. Liked her clothes. Beautiful, fun to play with. Stark says. My absolutely favorite toy as a child. I had so many Barbies, from the fancy limited edition ones to the cheap knockoffs with weird names. I also had Be Bathtub, Beauty Salon, Motor Home, Office for every occasion like Christmas or a birthday, most of my gifts were Barbie related. I'm so excited for the movie, Margot Robbie is a treasure and she's gonna knock it out of the park. I hope it's a huge success. Aquamarine underscore Daffodil 3 says. I love Barbie. Grew up with the dolls movies. Peppermind says. Loki hated the doll when I was a kid, but the upcoming movie looks like it might be fun. Mountain underscore air 1544 says. I was always more of a Bratz fan personally, but Barbie is pretty cool. I wish Monster High was a thing when I was a little girl, because little baby bad me would have loved that shit. Redrose underscore 812 says. I hadn't thought about her in a couple of decades since I had my own. Now my 7 year daughter is into them. In my opinion, even if she's still way too thin, she's come such a long way. I can remember my barbers mostly wearing dresses and they all had pointed feet to only wear heels, except for the ballerina one. Multiple of my daughter's barbers are flat footed. And wear sneakers. She's got a veterinarian one that wears scrubs, and is flat footed, and came with white sneakers, and several others that are flat footed. As someone who never wears heels or dresses and my daughter isn't into them either, pants and sneakers for the win. r slash ask women. Garlic bread 223344 says. Hello beautiful ladies, how do you stay safe when traveling alone? Reddish81 says. I listen to my gut. I'm friendly and open, but the minute I sense the other person might be about to take advantage of that, I'm out of there. If I have to be rude to do it, I am. No room for nice girl when your safety is at stake. However, years of solo travel have taught me that there is a lot of scaremongering about female solo travel, presumably designed to keep us at home, when the reality is we are relatively safe. I've had more safety issues on the streets of my home city than I have when traveling, and if I do have any issues, it's usually from foreigners like me, not the locals. Sad Sledgermain says. Well, I'm not beautiful, so I only really keep an eye out for tourist scams, including taxi drivers who try to overcharge, and hotels that, uh, draws a certain crowd. I'm out partying on my own in new cities all the time, have music in my earbuds on the highest volume, and always walk home by myself in the middle of the night, and I've never felt unsafe. Amabombami says. 
generally being aware of everything around me so no phones, no music etc. Keeping to the busiest route possible. Share my location on Google Maps or similar. I have an alarm and spray I keep in my hand, in my pocket. And generally, I try to avoid it. The Sezuka says. Resting Bizach, face and always have my keys in my pocket, but also, not listening to music or any other stuff. I like to hear everything around me, to be present. Miss underscore and throw P says. I actually don't like using my phone in public, and I limit my use. I prefer to have at least one hand unoccupied, so that I can brace or hit. Never linger too long in the parking lot. Lock your car, as soon as you get in. Don't loiter. Walk fast, confidently and with purpose. Never show that you're lost or confused. Cannibalistic 510 says. Ahem the mouse ek at all, whether that be pepper spray, a knife, a gun, whatever. Keep that shit on you. And practice using it. Nervous Toe 6779 says. No headphones being very weary of surroundings and what I consume, and having my location on and stuff like that. Thefrin Jedmagu says. I move quickly, and with purpose as much as possible to avoid getting stopped by anyone. Turn on your location, and share it with someone you trust. Pros underscore and underscore con says. This question is only for beautiful ladies, ugly ones stay away. Crafty 510 says. Being aware of my surroundings is paramount, and appearing confident are the most helpful to me. I used to travel alone for business, and was never hassled with unwanted attention. When I flew, and ended up chatting with a seatmate they were always respectful and kind. I had better experiences, while traveling than dealing with guys in the office. Crop Top Wither says. I plan out my routes in advance, especially if I don't have data on my phone to use GPS. I'll take screen caps of the map and directions, so I can refer to them later. I'll tell someone back home what I planned for the day. I splurge more on accommodations when I'm solo. I want to stay somewhere in a safe, convenient area and the hotel is well rated. Still, I'm picky about who gets to know I'm traveling solo, and if I want to post my travels on social media I won't post things in real time. I won't share the hotel info until I've left. That's all for this video. Was it good? I know not for I'm a robot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This video is the product of an automated process.